Hi everyone, this is Super 17 here, let me first like usual, I do not own this pictures, I made the thumbnail, and this is an unpaid video. So, it took me a while to think of where I'm going to go with this for part 2, version 2, well, version 2 of my Deku Ruby summoning, what if, but it's like part 2, and someone asked me, for part 7 of Deku summons a Ruby, funny thing, as soon as I get up to that point, when I get to that point, that's when I'm going to start making part 7 for each, you know, what if, I mean, for each basically version. Because I want to try to make it like I can go back and forth and I don't want to worry about, you know, keep on watching the exact same episodes. So, yeah, so I'll finish up part you know, I'll make part 7 when I get to volume 4, which would probably be very easy since I am not... Basically, I'm going to be focusing on a lot of the main thing for, well, the story of Ruby and me and, you know, all the characters. Like, it wasn't basically my, basically, version one of Deku summoning Ruby. So, yeah. Anyways, last time we left off is where Deku was summoned. He met some of the cast of, basically, Ruby. He met John, Pyra, Nera. Lee, or Ren, then Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang. And we also met Osman and, you know, Goodwitch, but the thing is, it's, um, basically, kind of was not, like, in person, that one, but yeah. So, and he also killed some Grimms. Which, I may be bringing in my own type of Grimms, just because I think it would be because I want to just, like, you know, have, like, some things, you know, different in between them, besides this whole entire thing. But, yeah, so, that is part, some things are going to happen, maybe he's going to, because I, when I was watching it over again, they said, basically, it's been, like, a month or two, or a couple of months since Roman, basically, well, or someone was stealing something before the end of Volume 1. So, we're going to, um... We're going to have that somewhat happen, but it's going to be, you know, time skips of different events. But I'm going to try to make this all happen in one part. Because I want to try to get, like, volume two in the next part. Because that's where some stuff is going to be happening more. But anyways. Let's get started. So, where we ended off was where Suku basically was sleeping. So... In this part, we're going to, well, have it like this. So, Izuku basically is sleeping, and he's not having a dream. It's more like he's just having a memory. He's remembering, basically, his past in My Hero Academia. Oh, I'm going to be heading downstairs now, so because my dad ain't here. So, I thought it would be better. Alright, so he's having a past memory, like I said, when he was in My Hero Academia, and, well, it's not a good one. Let's just hold up. As I was saying, yeah, he's having a past memory of My Hero Academia, and it's basically the day where he found out he was quirkless. Well, it's basically because of, you know, the days when he found out he was quirkless, man, but it's like he's also telling Bakugo, because he went to the park, not went home. And it's basically when Bakio's telling him, you know, he's useless and all that. Where basically he basically feels a lot of pain from that. But strangely though, in the, in the dream, he basically just, you know, basically clenching his fist, basically, you know, giving Bakio a glare. And Bakio was like, oi! Don't you click as he immediately gets up and punches Bakugo. Basically, in the dream. And basically, the lackeys are shot and Zuku is just saying, If you want to mess with me, then come get me. You know, as a kid. Reasons, well, technically it's also because he's controlling, you know, lucid dream, but yeah. But, all of a sudden, a ring's happening. He hears, he's like, huh? He's waking up, he's like, wait, what the, what's ringing? He goes, oh, crap, my phone. So he's looking, and basically, you know, goes in his pocket, grabs it, he's like, how do I work this? I mean, I know how to turn it on and use it, but he basically he's kind of like, you know, 
doing whatever he can. Then he just swipes it up. And then all of a sudden, it answers. He's like, uh, hello? And he goes, ah, you're awake. Well, or, well, you answered. I've been calling you for quite some time. He goes, wait, how long have I... And he basically was like, probably before afternoon-ish. Now it's like afternoon. He's like, uh, I, I fell slowly for lunch. He thinks to himself, which he goes, hello? Well, not hello. I mean, he hears someone says that. He goes, oh, sorry, just checking the time. So he was basically, he don't hear a slight chuckle. Which he was like, so your Oz pin. Basically, he was like, yes. I told you my number was in the phone. He was, yeah. Um, so. I basically would just realize something. I did say I was going to give you basically some things. Basically papers and identification so you can live in this world. But I also realized you did not have, well, lunch. I mean, not, I mean, not lunch. You don't have a place to live. Which Suzuki was like, wait, didn't he say that to find out on my own? Hmm, probably. But I had to find allies. Which basically asked him to wait for Zuku, you know, to keep on living because he could tell some, some designs. My goes, which Zuku just says, okay, I'll just. You know, see what he says. Which basically, you know, he was like, ah, really? He was, which went, actually he was like, yes. So, I basically have found a place that's relatively reasonable for you. Basically, to go to. Though, some renovations have been already finished due to, well, the help of basically the person who you are meeting. So, basically, they are basically going to show you the place you're going to live at. It's up to you to do everything else, buy, every, buy your food, basically, pay the bills if needed. He goes, what, what do you mean if needed? He was like, well, I'm, I can help out from time to time, but no. Which is just not solely. He goes like, so, basically, she has been informed since she was just got done with her job, basically, that she needs to go to this park. Which is like, uh, can I have the... He goes, yes. So basically, Izuku immediately grabs the book, well, his infinite mo notebook, and basically the, you know, pencil, and, start, and he goes, he asks for the address of the park, which he tells, and Izuku's like, thanks. He goes, no problem. Now, basically, you should be off. You don't want to keep her waiting. Besides, she has a sign basically saying your name, which Izuku's like, heh, you're joking, right? He goes, no. It'd be easier for you to find her then. And then basically he you know, he basically says goodbye to Izuku and Izuku says bye to Ospin. Which Izuku just like, you know, puts his you know, after hanging puts his phone in the pocket, he's like, Ospin. Huh. That's it's kinda of weird how he's helping me. Hmm. Even if he may be on that guy, but still. He said I had to be on my own. But how am I gonna get the money in place to live? I'll be on the basically have to live in the forest and such, and that may be dangerous due to Grimm's. Uh, okay, okay, I get it now. So he gets up and he puts he basically looks at the notebook and basically types in the address on his phone and well, after that he puts away the notebook and goes to it. Hold up. So yeah, so basically Zuku doesn't take that long to get there. And well, when he does, he's thinking, oh, this is a nice park. And, you know, he's looking around, seeing plenty of people are happy. But then he sees this blonde woman, glasses, white and black outfit, well, white short black pants, wearing basically some type of, well, something basically over her shoulders. And she's holding a sign saying it's like Midoriya. So, he basically is walking over to her, he was like, and she asks, Are you Zukumadori? He goes, Yes, and you are? She basically would say, My name is Glinda Goodwitch. You can call me Goodwitch for short, if you want. He goes, Alright. So, um, Miss Goodwitch. She goes, Yes. He goes, Um, who are you, specifically? He basically is kind of trying to think. Well, if he ever knew her, or, well, even saw her before, which he 
because the reason why he's doing this is because he thinks of, you know, Avery kind of remembers her a bit. Which she just, you know, blinks and be like, well, I'm a teacher from Beacon, so. He was like, ah. But she's thinking, I feel like I know him somewhere. But yeah, she goes, anyways, come on. The house is not, well, your home slash house isn't that far. But she goes, wait, house? She goes, a relatively small house, basically suitable for one person to take care of. And basically the fact is that just because of renovations, it's a little bit bigger than it was. But come on. But she's basically just walking up her. She's like, wait, why a house? Why not an apartment? Just too many people. Too many people for what? You'll see. And, well, Izuku's trying to basically get answers, trying to get basically her to say she's not saying, so he just finally gives up and just walks. And, well, only probably like 30 minutes later they get to the place, and the house is relatively small, but actually, you know, basically just looks really nice. Which she's like, which Izuku's like, uh. It's small, but yet it looks big, somehow. She goes, well, uh, it's because of many things. You'll see, basically, but most of it's underground. Which she's like, uh, huh? She goes, come on. So, what happens is, though, they basically go into the house. She shows him around and such. And the fact is that they will basically go in down a stairwell, basically, to the basement, he thinks. No. Basically, when they get down, there's a full-on, basically, library down there, which Izuku's just blinking in shock. And then she goes, this is basically a library of history, science, grim, and basically the history of dust. And found this basically history, along with basically what has happened, which Izuku's like, uh, 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 that, that's a lot. Which she goes, yes. Now, come on, there's a little bit more. So, basically, they, well, Izuku follows her, and he basically sees this train area, which she's like, uh, uh, now, this is the train area where you can help train yourself if you don't feel like going out and kill, basically, Grimm's, or out at night, and, basically, we have also have a library connected to it through that door, and basically a, well, wa a washroom for yourself, base and everything, which was, wait, why another, she basically then says, oh, the other, basically, library? It's for basically martial arts, you know, to help you increase on your knowledge of it. And basically, there's also certain basically equipment here that, well, can be activated using aura to make them even heavier. Which basically, she will show weights or basically, full on basically body suits, basically, that he can wear, you know, and train himself. Which he's like, uh, I, I, um, alright. She goes, yes, and just in case, there's also a multi-useful room, well, multiple use room, that we can switch into basically the surroundings and such in a way. Which goes, what do you mean by that? She goes, well, she goes, well, technically, if you basically are going to want to train in a certain area that this room can't provide, that glass door that leads to an all-purpose room, you can change basically it to semi-basically simulate certain things, like ice, for basically using ice dust, fire, to keep the room a little bit heated, you know. He's like, I see. He's thinking, how's that even possible? Anyways, so, in a sense, though, she goes, well, there's basically, it is probably not a room, but I don't think you'll be interested in that. He was like, <laughs> like what? She goes, well, I still work on your equipment. So basically they'll go down and it's like a full on basically equipment area which basically he then sees basically another glass door but it's like full of books and so she was like, uh, let me guess, another library for basically for how I can use the equipment? She goes, uh-huh. Which he was like, how much did this cost? She goes, which basically she thinks about it. Was like, well, actually, we had a lot of this hanging around and basically I knew some people that wanted to get rid of this basically equipment along with basically these manuals on how to use them and such, even basically we did only basically had extra copies on how to basically build your basically hunter equipment or make them or repair them. 
so it's not really that much spent. But well, for the construction and everything else, eh, which he's like, uh, 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 to, with his husband is like rich or something, which she just chuckles a bit. And she goes, well, you could say that. Seriously, I mean, if you don't know who Ospin is or what he's done for who knows how long, you... It's kind of hard to freaking say. But yeah. Anyways. So. Basically, after Zuku has like a mini freak out in his head, he just calms down and he goes like, all right. I would thank you and Austin for your help at all, but what's the catch? She basically is blinking, and then she goes, there's none. She basically is like, are you sure about that? She goes, yes. Besides, I mean, I'll do it in time, you'll find out. But we have to enough in return. All basically Osmond wants to do is to help you after what he's done. Which Azuku's eyes were like, wait, you? She goes, yes, I know. I have to know. Since I'm going to be helping you from time to time. After all. Basically, she hands him his identification papers. And basically, his identification card. You know, basically. Yeah. And then, basically, he's like looking at it. And then he says, guardian, Glinda Goodwitch. He's looking up, he goes, I am your guardian now. But she's like, uh, uh, but, uh, uh you, uh, why? She goes, you're living by yourself, you have no one around. So technically, and you're 13 years old. A, basically a very young, basically, hunter. I he was actually 14. She goes, huh? Well, I turned 14 during the 10 months. She goes, oh. Basically, she looks at the paper and she goes, oh, yeah, it's 14. Which, he basically was like, how did... Okay, that's kind of weird. Which she basically was like, Ozpin found out every, all the information he needed by, well, giving you what he gave you. Which he's like, uh, okay, now that's just... Never mind, never mind. He, he basically some, help, was, you know, sent me to a door up between dimensions. I'm not going to judge him no more. He's some type of his own basically powerful being. Which is Uber saying that in his head. So yeah, so anyways. So she was like, now since basically it is, well, she looks at the time, basically you know, three some like three well, not three but four four forty five goes, I'll make you dinner. The rest I'll come by and visit you every so often. Just don't get in trouble. He was heh. Thanks. So yeah, Zuku basically, you know, gets basically a dinner, basically by a good witch. And though the fact is, when he eats it, he does have a basically flashback of his mom. Because, I mean, he has cooked his own food and such, and though to have someone else eat with him, since he's been by himself, you know, the memory just pops up. Which, he's like, which he's basically seeing him basically... Started to tear up, and she was like, is everything all right? He goes, uh, sorry. He wipes away, you know, the tears are about the before and goes, you know, before man says this. He goes, it's just, uh, <laughs> um, my, uh, it's been a while since I, you know, ate with someone. She goes, how long has it been? He goes, five months, almost. She goes, I see. So, you know, she, you know, they eat in relative silence until basically Zuko tries to get a conversation started. And it just kind of goes from there. And, well, after that, she does tell Zuko she'll be back to see him basically in the next couple of days to see how he's handling everything. Which he would not, but ask if there's, like, I mean, he would say, basically ask why though she will to basically become his guardian. She was curiosity and also... A boy your age needs to have someone strict with you. But she was like, uh, Hey, I'm not like every other guy. She raised up an eyebrow and was like, Well, my mom raised me the right way. Besides, I prefer to be by myself. I'm not going to have no one over. Which she's thinking, Hmm. 
Is it because his past he doesn't really want to trust anyone? Or even wants to try no more? Interesting. But understandable. So yeah, she basically would just sigh and be like, Alright, I'm still going to come visit you every so often. So, Vizu, who, you know, after she leaves, he just sighs, he's like, Welp, this is my new home. Let's, uh, let's start some training. So, yeah. So, basically, since we know in Ruby Volume 1, basically a couple months go by, basically, because of Zuku's not in Beacon, we don't see him basically dealing with basically Ruby and wife's is basically an interaction then well I would say this is basically Azuka basically has been training himself and this does happen in this couple of days of Zuka training, you know, learning everything he can from the history books of Grimm's you know, to write some notes on it. That way then he can, you know, have their own little page of, you know, even drawings of Grimm. To basically, you know, learn about new martial arts and basically keep himself stronger and such. And also how to basically work the equipment he has. But he, he doesn't, you know, progressively, you know, he doesn't basically focus only on that. He does do his training, he does try to work with his weapons. Well, Scythe and Katami, not Katami, Scythe and Bow Staff try to get basically better in it. And, well, he found basically some, well, attack dummies to basically try out the mo his martial arts that he knows. Well, and try to get better and also read some new ones. But he does go out and get some fresh air, walk around. But we do have basically it's a day where, you know, John and, well, John basically, Pyra, Nero, Nira, Lee, Weiss, Blake, and, well, Weiss, Blake, Yang, Ruby, and this other team basically all go out, and basically we're getting some, like, tree sap, you know, the one that they say attracts Grimm's, you know, where, you know, actually, you'll find out what I'm talking about, but anyway, so, it's okay, kind of got up, and good watch did come by to see him. The other day, he was like, uh, she said she won't be able to come see me basically in the next couple of days because of hmm, class going out to the woods where there could be some troubles with a Grim or, or Grims out there. <sighs> you know, let me go spawning around. I actually go, actually go by near Beacon or just near that forest she was talking about. What was it called? So basically, he remembers the name of it and basically, you know, goes to his phone. Punch in the name, and basically get the location, get his hunter outfit on, get his, you know, basically, staff that basically can compress, so, yeah. He basically does that and just starts walking towards it. So, in a sense, what happens is very simple. He goes out, I mean, he goes looking around, and basically, you know, he's getting closer to the woods and such, and he's thinking... Man, hopefully nothing happens today. I mean, I should probably, I've been spending the next couple of days in the house. Actually, I should go out and, you know, fight some Grimms. Hmm, there's a lot of them here, then. Maybe I should basically fight them? Eh, probably get rid of them. Yeah, that should be good. So, Izuku basically is walking towards it. He hears some commotion. He's running towards it, but then jumps onto a tree branch. And he would see John about, you know, get hit by, well, Ursula, or, well, Bear Grimm. And he's about to do something, but then he sees something happening. And then, all of a sudden, basically, the shield goes and blocks a claw. And then he kills, basically, the, you know, John kills the Grimm by cutting off its head. And, well, his eyes are shot, and then he hears, basically, Pyra, Weiss, and Ruby, you know, Talk about basically Pyra's semblance. But then basically John says the same thing to his bully about, you know, they don't mess with him or his team. So yeah. Which, it's like he kind of grins at that. He goes, huh, a bully. Well, they're going to be everywhere, he thinks. So the fact is that he puts on the hood, put on the mask, 
because for some reason no one knows he was there. But, you know, when he looks down, Ruby and basically Pyra and Weiss are leaving. So he decides to, well, go a little bit further into the woods. Now, he has read up on basically the basic Grimms and basically their other basically types of Grimms. Even basically not have kind of gone to the rare ones. But for some reason, when Izuku travels into the woods, he does have his, well, his bow staff out, and just starts twirling it. He goes, well, when he stops, basically, he notices basically the claw marks. He goes, was this where that Ursula is going? No, they're smaller than that. Beowulf? Hmm. Maybe. So, he walks, you know, in the direction of where it's the claw marks, but then he finds this cave. He goes, huh, you gotta be kidding me. Is this a grim cave? So he looks basically into it. He basically sees the glowing red eyes. As then all of a sudden, you know, he basically has a bad feeling, jumps away, and which he sees basically, well, this weird, basically, claw. It looks basically like a normal, basically, Beowulf you know, claw, but it's way more jagged, which he's thinking, maybe one that, okay, this one... Maybe knows a lot of battle. So, in a sense, when the basically the Beowulf comes out, because Izuku only faced the regular Beowulfs, he never fit like the elite or basically, well, technically a version of them, a, basically more enhanced version of them, basically, saying like the Alpha, you can say, which Izuku is basically kind of like. Okay, what the heck is this, he's thinking. Uh, it's basically all of a sudden, the, you know, it how basically the Beowulf howls, which basically that does catch, even though he's been walking for, like, basically minutes, maybe even an hour or so, they were still doing the task because they were basically searching around for more Grimms, in which Ruby and her team, you know, were nearby, they hear that, which basically Zuku was like, <sighs> Call him for backup. All right, then. Bring it. So, he basically just points his staff at basically the Beowulf, but then the Beowulf sees his eyes glow for a second, which basically just, all of a sudden, you know, they just growl. Well, it just growls at him. You know, which, well, Izuku doesn't even care. So, the Beowulf runs at him, Izuku runs at it, basically, it tries to hit Izuku, he basically turned, basically, his staff, you know, his staff, basically, too quickly, it blocked and it hit the Beowulf's face, and then, basically, he just, well, he basically just turns around, starts hitting with, you know, the staff, basically, towards the Beowulf, hitting the face and the arm, well, shoulder, and then basically, chest, and then immediately jumps up and kicks in the face, which surprisingly sends it, basically, not flying, but just sends it stumbling, he lands, and then switches it to the scythe. So... All of it because he basically, well, kind of saw Russell in the wood in the woods, and then the other basically, you know, lesser, well, stronger Beowulfs come, the normal ones, which he's thinking, great, back up. I really wish I had basically this, well, in the bag, but I don't. I wasn't really prepared. I should have thought of something. <laughs> I really need to get another basically rough weapon. But he just sighs again, though. He goes, find out, find out how to get one later. First, kill these things. So, yeah. So, one of them will come up, basically, when they think Izuku is distracted. He would dodge and slice it in two. As then there's a few more coming. And he goes, what she's thinking? He's like, oh, come on. So, yeah. So, Izuku basically rushes towards them, basically finding them, dodging, you know, slicing, basically a few of them. And that's when Team Ruby comes in. Which... Basically, Yane's like, hey, it's that guy that was from, yes, well, basically a couple of days ago. Which, Ruby's like, uh, dude, you gotta be kidding me. Which, Yane's like, you alright? He goes, yes, it's just, I, I really don't want to see him. Which, basically, wait, oh, I said, yeah, I said wife, huh? Eh, whatever, keep going. I don't really care. Basically, I'm thinking way too fast in my head now. Which, basically, Blake is like, hold up. 
Race with Blake is like, it doesn't matter, we gotta help him. So, basically, Ruby's like, yeah, unfortunately. Which, basically, why is you don't like him either? Which, basically, Ruby was like, no. I, I honestly don't know why. Which, well, what happens is very simple. When basically one of them, one of the grooms up to hit Izuku from behind, basically Yang basically comes in and punches it, which Izuku was like, hey, biker girl, what's up? She goes, the name's Yang. He goes, first name only? She goes, no, last name, but don't have enough time to say first name. He was like, all right. Which she basically all of a sudden, basically, another grim is about to, you know, come, which then Blake comes in, you know, slashes at it. And she goes, hey, Blake. She goes, she waves high at him. So... All of a sudden, though, basically, another Grim, you know, basically that, the Alpha would come, but then gunshot, hit, the Grim gets hit in the shoulder, which he basically was like, Hey, Little Red! He turns around when, after, when he sees her, he says that. But she's like, ah, Never mind. And then he sees Vice basically fire off some Grims, which he goes, Hey, do you mind basically taking care of the big ugly over there? I'm gonna help out basically your friend. Which... Yang and Blake look at each other and look at it, and then they just look at him and nod. He goes, thanks. So he runs off, basically, you know. Which, basically, another basically, Graham was about to, you know, to go after Weiss. Ruby was about to come in, but then all of a sudden, well, this, they don't know who Hizuku is, so he's just a nice mysterious guy, came in out of nowhere, saves her, and basically, he goes, you're welcome. Ice Queen, she goes, it's Weiss. Weiss me. He's like, all right, Weiss. Which, she's like, thank you. He goes, I'm just going to call you Ice Queen just to piss you off, though. She's like, I, why? Basically, though, it's kind of like, basically, you know, to converts back into basically a staff. And basically kind of, you know, keeping her cover, basically, the long range. And basically, you know, she's basically doing her thing. He goes, eh, easy. Don't really care for people in this world. Well, nah, he won't say this word. I don't really care based on what people think or say to me. So, you know, besides, I'm just trying to have fun. She goes, fun? You think this is fun? Basically, all of a sudden, basically, Zuku trains back into the second slash hat. Basically, a couple of Grims that were still, basically, Beowulfs. He goes, eh, eh. I mean, to be fair, I'm trying to enjoy my life. Not be a stick in the mud. Which, she's just thinking, he's acting like a kid. Which, well, Ruby would have, you know, got down because a Beowulf would try to claw at the... Well, basically, tree branch he was at. So, he goes, <sighs> If only, basically, I had something. Like a gun or something. Which, basically, they just look at him and be like, Wait, you don't have, basically, your weapon can transform into it? It was only a slave and bow staff. She was like, uh, uh. But all of a sudden, before anything else, basically, a Beowulf basically launches itself at Weiss. You know, trying to, basically, you know, to end Weiss's life. Which she was able to basically block at the last minute, but some basically, well, basically it tries to, you know, hit her, you know, hit her, but, she, you know, bite into her, I mean, and, but it's biting the weapon, and then basically it just throws the weapon to the side, and why she's thinking she's going to, and then all of a sudden, basically, she sees basically the bail gets punched and then kicked, and then basically all of a sudden, well, because so you could jump and kick it, and then he just slashed at it and lands as it dies. Basically... Izuku's like, you all right, Weiss? She's like, yeah. She's like, that, I mean, he saved me quick, which basically, well, Izuku then runs over to Weiss's weapon. All of a sudden, though, for some reason, the dust, basically, as soon as he picks up that weapon, the dust is, you know, activates inside of, basically, Weiss's weapon. To the color she was on, basically, it was fire. Well, red, so fire. Which, all of a sudden, basically, Zuku's body, well, eyes turns into red, including his hair, but also his scarf, which he's thinking, whoa, wait. Which, then he basically froze, basically, wise her wife, and he asks, what's in this, that revolver part? She goes, dust. Which, his eyes wide, and he was like, oh. Then he basically just, like, you know, basically has the steps turn and now fire's coming off of it. He's like, yeah. This just got a lot more easier than he thinks, but I don't know how much time I have. So, which, Ruby, Weiss, Yang, hold up. Alright, so, yeah, they're just all looking at him, and Izuku basically, you know, does 
they start spinning, they sit a step, and then basically, you know, kind of like, all of a sudden, we're like, fireballs are basically made out, and he, you know, he basically hits one with the step. Basically, like, it splits onto a couple of fireballs, and then it basically hits the other fireball that was spilling there, and that splits off again. So, then Izuku basically, you know, starts getting a run, and starts runs towards, basically, the Alpha uh, Grim, and which, basically, it looks like just a fireball, or just all the entire fire stream is, you know, going towards it, while there's also, basically, feathers, but they're on fire now, which everyone is shocked by, and Zuku basically runs towards it, but then, you know, activates the scythe, in which, well, his weapon's on fire along with it, and then, he doesn't say, he doesn't scream out, he just basically just yells, yeah! and, you know, basically, Yang and Blake were just about to try to finish it off, but because of Zuku, they kind of, you know, didn't go, they were just in shock by this. In which, basically, when he sliced it, it's like a whole entire, like, cut was gone through the, basically, the grim, the ground, and then towards, basically, the cave entrance. But it's all just fire. Which, after that, basically, the whole entire grim starts turning into, basically, well, starts to fade away, but it's on fire. Which, basically, everything, you know, the fire, well, dust deactivates, you know, he's basically back to normal. Which, then, he basically... Yeah, you know, get the staff form back, and then basically starts folding it up. Give me a minute. All right. So as I said, he was just folding it up, and well, he um. Wait, hold up. I need to check something. Actually, okay. As I was saying, basically, um, yeah, he basically folds the staff back up, and he looks at them. He's like, "Well, thanks for the save. I needed that." Which basically, Yang's like, "So." Why were you here? He's like, meh. Wanted to basically just get out in my ha basically place and wanted to basically walk around. It's then Weiss is like, in a forest that's near basically Beacon and basically where there could be Grimm. He's like, yep. Which Ruby's like, e how did you? And he goes, meh, my semblance. Then he thinks, one of them at least. He goes, uh, th that's, that's so cool. He was like, thanks, little red. Which basically... That kind of just, he just has a tick mark on her head. Basically, he just kind of, like, grinning on the inside. And then she was like, you know what? So they say she tries to basically punch him, which Izuku dodges. Then basically dodge the other punch. Then dodge another. Then basically, all of a sudden gets out of the staff and basically blocks that punch. So when Ruby tries to get out her, basically, her scythe, Izuku basically kind of, like, just volleys over her with the staff. You know, Basically, just land on his feet, and she's like, just annoyed. He's like, basically, you know, folds it back up real quick. And he's like, man, I mean, you're pretty quick, but, you know. She's like, get, why are you call me a little, little red, even though your name, my name is Ruby Rose? He goes, I don't know. Do you like it? Besides, I mean, don't know why. I just find it funny when you're just mad. She's like, you're gonna pay very much, uh, um, uh, I, I don't even know your name, he was, because I never told anyone. I mean, could call me Grim, could call me basically whatever, which Yang just kind of thinking about something, and she was like, uh, Crow? Which, basically, Ruby and, well, everyone, actually not just Ruby, everyone looks at her, he was like, Crow, yeah. I guess you guys can call me Crow. Which, basically, Ruby's like, Yang, why? Which, before anything else could happen, Izuku just, you know, be like, anyways, gotta go. Got some stuff I gotta do today. So, catch you girls around. It just runs off, basically, even feathers. And basically, she just, well, Blake just catches a, basically, a feather. And goes like, why does it look like a crow feather? Which, basically, Yang's like, that's why. Okay, I actually have to do something I did. Want to see what was up with my dad, so I gotta call up someone because he's questioning something and wants to know why. Some amount of money. Ugh, give me a minute. Alright, so basically, after Blake says that, basically, Ruby was just like, uh, How did you? She basically, What? He reminds us of our, well, of my, well, of our uncle Ruby, which Ruby's like, No, he's not. He's not like him at all. 
Which, uh, I hate this phone. I... Okay, like I was saying, basically, which good witch comes over and she basically sees basically the slash on the ground and such and everything else. She asks, What happened? Which basically, Yang's like, Oh, just some guy would basically give a name, Crow, basically saved us. Which she was like, Wait, Crow? She was basically, Yang's like, With a CR. Which she was like, Oh. So, yeah, which. Ruby's like, yeah, and he totally doesn't even say my name. I mean, why well, says, at least he said my name, but still gonna call me Ice Queen. Which Ruby just sighs in a little bit of annoyance. In which, basically, Good Witch asks, what did he look like? And so they kind of explain what happened, and basically, then all of a sudden, we just gasp. Which everyone just looks at her, basically, Ruby asks, what's wrong? She goes, my, the red dust I have in my, basically, weapon. Which, she, basically, they look, they see, basically, it was bright red. Now it lost all its color and became just, you know, had no, nothing in it. Like, no color to it. Which, basically, they're just in shock. Basically, basically Blake says, he did say it's his semblance. So basically, then what Yang goes, so that means you can take dust and get the attributes of them? Which basically, Weiss is like, that's, that should be impossible, but. Which basically, Good Witch asks, then, you know, just tell everything. So yeah, they say exactly everything that has happened when they met Rizuku again, which she's thinking, ah, that boy. But then she goes, all right, thank you for telling me, girls. I'll, ha I'll tell basically Professor Ozpin, well, Headmaster Ozpin about this. And we'll look into it. Which they all say, alright. So, yeah. And they leave. You know, they basically go their way. Which she's looking at basically what Azuka has done. See the fire still there. And she just says, ah, we have to talk to him about this. Maybe. Well, I'll see what basically Ozpin says. So, yeah. So, Azuka basically, you know. Meanwhile, I was basically running and getting out of the woods. But anyway, so when he does get it, you know, back into town, he takes off the mask and the hood and then just, you know, walks around. You know, kind of basically think to himself, that was fun. Ah, now, let's basically just you know, get a few things and then head back home and start doing my lessons. But then all of a sudden he gets a reward saying, for killing basically multiple Grimm's, and basically meeting new people, well, working with people, and for basically, you know, also killing a well, Alpha, basically Beowulf, which then all of a sudden makes you, Izuku has out his hand, and, well, he really knows basically hit the bad guy a little bit more, basically lots of some more stuff in him when he looks into it. He sees basically more claws and basically fangs, but he does see them like Beowulf, basically, Beowulf, basically, I mean, like, probably, how can I say this? Because you'll notice the claws are longer and the fangs are, it's a little bit more, you know, wild-like. And he goes, huh, all right. So, yeah, but what he basically has is basically, well, information on, well, not, well, information on basically, on where basically some, you know, about his dust. Well, the dust basically part of his semblance. And the fact is basically about the Schnee basically company. Which he was like, yeah, I don't think there was any in that library about them. Uh, well, this is giving me general information and oh basically he does look but then he does see on the ground there was basically basically a bag. He puts that in his basically his bag. He was like, money. Cool. And then he also knows basically Wait, is this an armband? So he just puts that on and basically, it perfectly fits him fine, and, but the armband kind of basically, like, he sees little slots in there. He was like, wait, is this, basically the helper says, this is where you're, when you basically get the chance to get dust. This is where your dust can be basically held in so that way when you absorb it, it basically then can cycle through multiple different dust at once. Which he's like, cool. So, after that, we do have basically a couple of days later, 
Well, actually, no. He basically trains... No, not a couple days. A month later, he basically trains, you know, gets a lot stronger. He's getting a lot more better. But, you know, he doesn't really have much, you know, doesn't have many dreams about his past. But he keeps on basically getting this weird one where there's basically someone just sitting there basically on a chair looking outside a window. He's like, you know, keeps on trying to talk to them, but they don't answer. So he just, you know, kind of got used to that. Now... This is better specifically of, you know, night. Uh, give me a minute. Okay, like I said, basically a month has passed and Zuku just does more things like study more, basically keep on basically, you know, learn about more grims and basically sometimes different areas where they change. And he basically learns out there, so there's always basically a, like a higher, like basically different species variables. So yeah, you know, new grims can come around every so often. So, but he also has gotten stronger, he trained more, and basically, you know, like I said, the dreams, he kind of just ignores them. Well, he doesn't ignore them, he just lets them be a part of his regular day routine. So yeah, so this is basically just a night where Mizuku basically kind of like reminiscing, he goes like, ah, okay, so I've basically went after and killed Grimms to test my strength. And I'm getting a lot faster, and for some reason, I've been noticing even I don't have any dust, there's sometimes basically weird flames coming off of my bow staff. Hmm, I should really try to look into that. Maybe I should just tell Goodwitch about this. Maybe Ozpin? Hmm. This may be basically a good thing or a bad thing. Ah, I'll see about it later. So. But then when he says that, he basically hears a crash, and then he kind of just decides to follow that noise, so he runs over to it, and what he finds is a couple of guys, and then a guy in basically a black hat, a white suit, and a cane, well, white suit, black pants, black shoes, just in a cane, talking to them. He's like, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Do you have any more dust? Which basically hears the, the guy you know, in the basically building saying, this is all we have, which basically Roman's like, all right then, thank you for doing for you know doing business with us. Izuku puts on the hood, then basically the mask, you know, basically goes in and immediately jumps right through and kicks one of the guy, getting the bow staff, hits another guy, sending them basically one of them technically not flying, but basically the kid just knocks the guy out, sends him basically flying a bit. The other one gets by the staff, he's also knocked out, which basically he goes like, what the. A kid? Which Izuku just says, you know, it's not really nice to steal from people. Which, he's like, ah, kids these days, they never know what's good for them. He goes, listen kid, how about you just run along, go back to your, well, mommy or daddy, and basically let us do, let the grown-ups do the work, what they're doing. Which Izuku thinks, and I was like, how about, no. Which, he's like, alright, get him boys. So, Basically, a couple of the guys, there's not that many guys, like, th three extra guys, you know, are at Izuku. He basically just dodging, like, hitting them away, basically, basically punch one, basically, in the face. And basically dodging another one, then cut, jumps up and kicks that person. Using the bow staff to basically put, you know, make him stay in the air longer. Then he just kind of, like, holding himself up there, and then basically spins and kicks the guy. Send that guy flying, basically, that guy's getting up while the other one's getting up while the first one they punched was... Not down, so he keeps on dodging, and then basically all of a sudden, you know, basically he just kind of smirks underneath the mask. They basically try to hit him. He basically goes forward. They basically stumble, and then when they turn back, they both get punched in the face. While Izuku was basically stabbed and spinning there, he just caught it. He goes, just you and me. Which he's like, got some skill. I give you that, kid. He's like, thanks. So, why you need all this dust? I mean... It's just a small time. Shabby was like, Meh. we need it for something that you don't need to worry about. Besides, it's none of your business. Which is Zuka's thinking, oh, now I know what I'm going to be doing, looking into the sky. He goes, wait a minute, you're Roman uh, Torch, Torchrick, whatever last name. He's like, huh, I mean, you got the first name right, but why can't you not say the you know, other name, their name? My last name right. Which, he's like, I don't know. Just sounds like Torchwick. Or Trick. He's like, 
get it. Torchwood, torch trick, you know, torch trick, or trick, whatever. Uh, tongue twister. Which is like, you. Uh, that's why I don't really like kids. So basically, all of a sudden, he points his cane at Zuko, and then all of a sudden, the bottom of the cane flips open, and he's like, uh oh. So basically, he sees basically a ball of basically, you know, looks like energy is flying towards him. Zuko dodges it, and he basically goes out and basically blows something up. But she's like, ah. Oh. What happens next is, well, Roman basically did not see it coming. Izuku basically punched, you know, basically came out of nowhere and punched him. Sent him outside, basically, the, basically, building. He asked the person that owns it. He was like, you all right? He goes, yeah, so I was just waiting for a late night customer to come. He goes, I didn't ask that, but all right. So, basically, Izuku runs out, basically, gets there. He sees Roman get up. He goes, mean right hook. He's like, which well, Izuku's not talking no more. And he basically, you know, starts to have his staff basically up the ground, basically, as Roman sees a little bit of sparks. He goes, interesting, on that kid. So, basically, Roman just, you know, kind of just sighs. All of a sudden, something, basically, like a, which Azuka never see, but basically, it's basically their aircraft, basically, plane. You know, basically what you see in the very end of Volume 1. That type of basically plane appears. Well, basically with... He sees basically something looks like it's propelling it, but then like also keeping it up. Which Roman's like, up. Well, looks like my ride's here. Which is who says, oh no you don't. So basically, Roman basically holds up his cane and launches up, where he basically hooks onto something pulling up. Izuku runs and tries to get him, but Roman basically kicks Izuku. Izuku will land a bit because all of a sudden he sees basically Roman basically shooting out basically, you know, well, about to shoot at him. Izuku kind of realizes that staff is not in his hand. He looks around and sees it in another place, which he's, Izuku's like, ah, ah, crap. So right when the ball basically, you know, is about to, you know, going towards him with energy, Izuku doesn't know why, but for some real reason, he just basically, you know, brings back his fist, and then basically propels it forward, basically before the ball even gets, like, only, like, halfway, not even fully close to him, fire comes out of his fist, basically, hand the basically the ball makes an explosion. Uzuku's eyes widen, and it's basically after the smoke, torture, and hit, well, Roman and his, basically, allies leave, where Uzuku's looking at his fist and be like, all right. Had to tell Good Witch and Ozpin. He goes over to get the staff, goes back to the guy. I was like, you sure you're okay? He's like, yeah. Um, here. Basically, he gives basically Zuku basically some vials of dust. He's like, I, I can't take it. He's like, no, nah, nah, don't worry. This is, um, this is, as in basically, Zuku, no, no, how much is that basically for, well, I guess fire, ice, and wind? Because of the color scheme. Which is like, uh, basically he gives him basically a rather cheap price, which Izuku doesn't really know how much dust truly is, so he gives him that much, and he's like, uh, thanks, and he runs away. The cops come and basically get the goons and such, and basically just slaying some gun saved them. So it was on the news, which basically, they basically show a description of basically the, you know, of the one who saved the guy, which basically, yeah, it's like, hey, Rivi, Rivi, Rivi. Which Ruby's like, huh? Because it's during lunch, and basically they see. Which Ruby's like, eyes widen. In shock, and he wipes and basically Yang, well, wipes and Blake, I mean. Are like, what's wrong? Which she grabs Yang's phone and shows them. Basically saying, basically, this shop basically was about to be, was being robbed until basically this stranger came in. Here's a picture of basically who he is. Which they see it, which Yang's like, it's Crow. Which basically Blake's like, well, that's something. Why he's just like, is he some type of hero? Or someone just trying to play hero? Which, Ruby's like, I, I don't know, but... I, he he was attacking Roman. Which, basically, that kind of shocks, basically, Weiss and Blake. But then James like, who's Roman? He was like, Roman Tortrick? You know, the guy basically stealing dust? Which, basically, James like, oh yeah, forgot about him. Which Weiss is like, I, okay, it's a good thing basically he stopped him, but still, what is this? Ah. This doesn't make no sense. Which, basically, Blake would nod to that. He goes, 
why would basically uh, why would Crow basically like the same you know help someone out like this? He was which basically Ruby was like I don't know. You gotta ask him next time, which basically they would not. So yeah, they don't see him for basically the next couple months. But in those months, Izuku has basically been learning about dust and basically properties of it, and also been kind of like you know going out and uh, killing more grims, getting basically the rewards of it. Basically, find basically a snake grim and basically killed it, got its fangs and scales. You know, basically got money, so he's been kind of saving up and, you know, doing his own things, learning, training, and basically kind of met toward, you know, Roman a couple of times. You know, I've also been looking into him. Basically, also, he would have told, he would basically have finally told them, basically, like, I think like two months have passed or three months all in total, because it says a couple months. So, yeah. So basically, he was saying in the third month, basically, where to end, like, the end of Volume 1 is happening, because Ruby and her game, everything's happening like that, which, well, basically, Izuku basically got to basically Beacon, and kind of went there, basically, when not many, many students are around. He basically kept them both the hood on and such, and, well, when he gets there, he's like, uh... Austin, you here? He's looking around, he sees Austin's office, which initially, well, Austin was sitting in a chair, he was like, ah, Izuku, good, which is going to be here, well, we'll be here soon, he's like, cool, um, hey, question, about this, uh, you know, power, which, he's like, he raised up an eyebrow, he's like, oh, that's what we want to talk about, we'll wait till good witch comes, so, wait when good witch does come, basically, 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 good which says, Izuku, hi. He goes, hey, um, I haven't been telling you something for the past couple months. She goes, wait, what did you do? He's like, not what I do, but what I found. It's about the power. Which basically will make her blink. So basically, good which was sitting in the chair right across from on his pin, which Izuku sighs, but like, okay. So remember that day where I basically, like a couple months back, I basically saved some... Star for being robbed by Roman, which Ottoman goes, you've been doing that a lot. He goes, the first one. He goes, ah, yes. Well, I kind of was jumping towards him. He kicked me away. He didn't have my staff at the time. I was, I was wanting to dodge, but my body didn't move on some reason. Well, moved on its own, and then I just basically punched the air, as then all of a sudden, fire came out of my fist. Which, basically, this would kind of shock them both. But then Ottoman would be more collected. He was like, Hmm, maybe the power gave you the ability to wield fire. If you can fire bend. Which he's like, seriously? He goes, yes. It's probably due to your basically getting stronger, so. This will basically be a great help for you in the future. He goes, alright. Which, basically, though. Basically, you know, good, which is like, you can shoot fire at your fist, ain't it? Tell me. He was like, I've been training with it a bit. <laughs> So she's like, ah. she just sighs, and like, what am I going to do with you? He was like, he just shrugs. So he was like, well, I just want to get some answers from you, and that's what I got. So I'll be seeing you around then. So basically, Zuku kind of just, you know, kind of leaving, basically. But we could still go to Good Witch and, you know, and Ospin. Which, basically, Ospin goes like, he's progressing quite nicely. It seems basically it would go differently for some people when they get the Holy Maiden's power. We're going to a novel, like, but still, shoot fire out of his, basically, fists and firebend? It's like basically when he gets the fire dust, which Ospin would remember Glinda telling him that, which he's like, hmm. <laughs> if he can firebend them, he may be actually true to be able to control, basically, the fire when he basically activates his both semblance of, basically, well, elemental dust semblance and basically weapon and creation semblance. Well, elemental creation semblance, I mean. Which, well, it just says, and that boy's gonna be trouble. Trouble. Everywhere he goes. I have a feeling. Which, basically, I was basically sipping some of his coffee. Or, yeah, coffee, basically. Oh. Well, you never really mind him since he's always basically, as you say, just wonderful to be around. Which, Kulin does like, I I never say that. He was like, oh, you were saying that a couple of days ago. And he also said it felt like you had a son. 
Which basically Gwen does face got a little red. She goes like, just shut it and walks away, which honestly just has a good laugh. So when basically we go back to Izuku, he does leave Beacon. He does kind of basically start thinking about what he can do now, but then he sees smoke. He's like, ah. Basically he just starts running towards it and such. So basically meanwhile Osman does have a call and such doesn't know where Penny is and you know kinda leaves. So, when basically Zuku arrives there, he basically sees Penny, you know, going to basically, you know, fight off some, basically, guys in these weird outfits. Izuku, basically, hood on, mask up, jumps down, immediately step, you guess his bow staff and just starts smacking away, basically, these guys in these weird outfits. He goes, hey, he goes, who are you? He goes, Crow, nice to meet you. She goes, Crow, you don't, he goes, Basically, look out! Basically, he throws his staff, basically hits one of the guys, sent if the staff spin up, then he just jumps up and grabs it, and basically lands. Hold up. Like, as I said, he lands, and basically, he's like, ah, stay focused. When she's like, alright. So, in a sense, Zuku basically and her basically are just fine. Basically, Ruby would decide to come down, and he's like, hey, Ruby, good to meet ya again. She's like, yeah, I know. Which she doesn't even know basically he actually called her by her name. Which is who could kind of like smile at that. He's like, oh man, this is going to be funny when she realizes it. So, in a sense, basically, you know, some basic members of the white fang try to fight him. Blake basically came out, you know, basically, you know, comes out. And basically Roman's like, hey, it's you again. He goes like, hey, Roman, it's great to see you. So, how's my favorite thief? He's like, ah, phew, phew. You know how much problems you caused me to be in? He's like, meh, problem with small bombs. Whatever how you say it like that, but ain't, you know. I'm just basically here to basically make sure you don't basically steal anything. He's like, uh, I want to be able to steal something to basically... Well, she doesn't get in my way, which basically he sees Blake kind of getting up slowly, which a nerve, basically fondest guy. He's like, you know, time to, you know, I really don't like when basically you... Some people just like to pick on the weak. Which that kind of makes everyone who looks at him. He's like, all of a sudden, basically, the blue, basically, powder's glowing. And then all of a sudden, basically, his whole entire scarf and mask goes blue along with his eyes. He goes like, so how about you just chill? As when he just smacks his foot in the ground, the whole entire area of fat happens. Most of the fondness get frozen. Not completely over, just their bodies. As Roman basically jumped along with basically Blake, Sun... Penny and Ruby, which Roman's like, okay, that is new. So this kid got you got some new tricks. Basically, Zuku starts spinning his whole entire sight. I'm not sight for me. Whole entire basically staff is starting to get ice on it. And then basically kind of shows like a spear. You know, he was like, eh, learn. Didn't want to use my semblance. So you ready to dance? But then all of a sudden, basically, and ice shield basically is being formed in his, you know, right arm, which Roman's like, okay, okay, a little bit more than just new tricks. So, Roman kind of shoots basically some, basically, you know, with his staff, his, you know, weapon, energy balls coming at him. Izuku was able to use the shield to block and run basically towards him, leaving ice feathers basically in the wake. For some reason, Izuku was also able to run, he realizes, on the ice have full control. So, but still, he needs to be, he doesn't know how long this form's gonna last, so he needs to be able to end it quickly. So, basically, when, um, I don't like when Penny basically would destroy the ships, basically, Roman, you know, would be fighting a Zuku, dodging and such, trying to basically punch him, Zuku would kick him, send him flying, he would stop by using this cane, but still sliding, but then he would, you know, see a ship, and, well, the ship would be low enough for him to jump, and he was like, man, these kids get weirder and weirder every day. Basically, yeah, these kids get weirder and weirder every day, basically. So, yeah, so what happens next is basically some ships are coming, they're basically shooting. The Zuku Chai just basically kind of, you know, throws the shield basically towards one of them. When it hits, basically all of a sudden, just like boom, throws. As then the Zuku's like, oh crap. So, what he does is basically, you know, use basically, you know, his set, basically his. The element of Dunn's and basically keeps basically the ship from crashing by making ice catch it. 
And one of the other ones, like, the pilot's like, oh, crap, no, I'm not dealing with this. And kind of runs, you know, kind of goes away along with Roman. Which, basically, Izuku, you know, basically goes back to normal. He's like, man, that's, that really, <laughs> yeah, that guy really likes to run. Which, basically, Penny's like, how did you do that? He's like, my semblance. Whatever, he's like, you, you, you have two semblance? He goes, hey, I get the elemental from dust, and I can control it, and make stuff with it. She's like, ah, 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 ah. You, you. He was like, well, see you around. Which she basically just walking away, while the cops are basically on the way. Ruby's like, no, 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 we're gonna talk. He's like, yeah, sorry about that. You're just not quick enough, Jason, to catch up. She's like, Wait, what did... As then he, you know, just kind of, like, disappears, leave a feather in the wake. Which, Ruby's like, I, I really don't like that guy. Basically, Penny's like, why? He was, well, he never called me, basically, my name. And then he always called me Little Red or Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, he just likes to tease me. It gets really annoying. And But then Penny says, but he did call you Ruby. Which, she's like, huh? When? When you arrived? But Zuku was basically on top of a building. Weiss and Blake, not Weiss and Blake, Weiss and Yang came. Blake and Sun basically, you know, were out of the field of area of it. Which, basically, Blake actually even noticed that too. Then, basically, when Yang and Weiss come, she goes, they hear Ruby like, He said my name, I didn't even notice! Which is Zuku's just chuckling on top of a rooftop. He's like, uh, Things always get fun when the, they're around. Maybe I should start making friends with them. But first, gotta change my green hair. The little change is in order. So he gets up. Basically then the reward system for defeating, basically, and defending, basically, the shipments. Basically, the rewards will be given to you. This much cash, or this much money, and basically, as in he basically cashes it, he goes, A bottle of black hair dye? Permanent? Huh, fused with dust. I mean, that may sound strange, but... Let's see why. Basically, he kind of reasons, like, oh, it's to keep basically the hair from ever basically losing it. To basically the dye, so the dust absorbs it. It's as soon as basically it's part of basically the hair, it can never be removed. And if I need to want to change my hair back again, I'll have to re-dye my hair. Meh. Sounds nice. So, yeah, Zuku basically just kind of leaves. And, well, Penny does have her same talking, but she does say... Basically, Osman, why did he, why did this young man, well, this guy came in out of nowhere, he calls himself Crow. Isn't Crow basically someone that you have working for you? Which, he asked for a description, which, he goes, ah, that Penny is someone basically that Team Ruby basically gave a name to since he never told him his name. Which she, she's like, oh, why? He goes, because every time he leaves, he always leaves a, you know, a trail, well, crow feathers around. Which, basically, she just nods slowly and goes like, but why does Ruby not like him? Which, basically, he goes, <laughs> uh, that's just how things are. Meanwhile, with Ruby, Blake, Yang, and Weiss, you know, they kind of reconcile, which, basically, Ruby's like, he said my name, I didn't basically even have basically known it. Well, I didn't basically have basically even confirmation of it. Ugh. Which, Yang just kind of chuckles. But Blake is like, it's not that bad. Which Weiss is like, yeah, I mean, at least you finally got him to say your name. He's like, I know. Which, basically, Yang saying, like, but you know, the whole dark, dark, mysterious vibe he gives with that playful nature does make him kind of cute. Which, they all look at her, so he's like, what? Which Weiss just kind of scoffs, like, he's nothing but a ruffian. Which, basically, Blake is like, and yet, I saw you basically draw on him on your basically book in class once. Which, her face gets a little red, she goes, shut it! Which, basically, Blake is actually having a kind of a smirk, which then basically all of a sudden, why so goes, yeah, and you basically kept on talking your sleep about him, saying something you want to see what's underneath the mask. Which, Blake is like, I don't know what you're talking about. Which, Ruby's like, wait, 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 do all you girls like him? Which, basically, Yang's like, meh, don't know yet, never talked to him. we only seen him from time to time, and basically from what I know, he seems like a good person. 
why well, says he may be a ruffian in some way or form, but I mean he at least he's wanting to help out people. Blake says, mm-hmm. And basically he doesn't seem like he cares and doesn't like to well as he basically looks at the white fane who are basically frozen over the not complete you know, not the heads I mean, just most of the body. They said basically he, they could have well been frozen completely over, but they're not. So he's not willing to kill people. Which Hmm, he maybe he doesn't like to basically do violence, maybe. I'm just wondering what who he really is and what he's well but whatever makes him tick. Well Ruby's like, hm, doesn't mind matter to me. I just wanted basically him to finally say my name without well, me not well, me not basically noticing. Which basically Yang's like, Aw, oh, does my little baby sister have a crush? <laughs> Which she's like, Yang yeah, no Which Basically, they all, Team Ruby has a chuckle while Ruby's face is red, which basically Yang's like, well, I mean, doesn't really matter. We have to get to know him first before we can say anything. Besides, we do have all a crush on him. How does this gonna work? Which basically, Blake just shrugs. Blake says, I won't like him, not one bit. Basically, Ruby's like, yeah, me neither. Which basically, Blake. And Blake and Yang look at each other and look back at them while Ruby and Mike are just leaving, which Blake's like, I can admit I do have a little bit of interest in him, but not basically in that way yet. Mike says, same. But it seems like for some reason, Blake, don't you, you know, don't you agree? That basically my baby sister and wife may actually have fallen for him in some way or form. Which, basically your wife saying, your sister crushed. Weiss, maybe love. Which, basically, Yang would nod. We need more, basically, we need more, basically, details on this before fully, you know, saying it. Goes, yep. So, yeah, and that's where I'm going to leave it off, everyone. Guys, hope you guys have a nice day, night, wherever you are, and bye. I'll try to make, make part three tomorrow night or, you know, later. So, yeah, bye, everyone.